Ah, right. So after a little delay there while I uh, got a new uh, or an additional stepper motor, uh, yeah, it's kind of lucky that I made that video going through all the parts because um, for some reason I know I needed five motors, but I bought four steppers. Uh, so I had to quickly order another one. A uh, slight mm, bonus possibly is that... Uh, I got a slightly more grunty one, a little bit more torque on it. Um, so yeah, I'll use that one for the extruder. So I guess it's sort of about time to get on and start building the thing. And I'm going to start with the Y-axis. In fact, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be following more or less exactly the Prusa manual that's available on their website. Um, because a lot of the parts are exactly the same as standard Prusa stuff. So I'm going to be following that. Those bits I'm going to sort of um, time lapse. That's the word. I'm going to time lapse through stuff that's well. You can just follow the manual. It's not really rocket science. <clears throat> if uh, well, when I get to bits that I'm doing differently, um, if it's a bit like Tom's stuff, then I'll probably mention that it's like Tom's stuff. If it's different to both the standard original Prusa build and also Tom's build, then I'll probably detail that a little bit more because that's something I'm doing maybe differently to anybody else. I don't know, but certainly different to those two. Um, the link down is down below in the description for both the Prusa manual and uh, Tom's live stream of doing his Y-axis. And, uh, well, I see no reason not to start building a Y-axis. Um, yeah, cue the time lapse. Y-axis more or less done. Um, the only thing that I haven't done, according to the steps inside the Prusa manual, is I haven't fitted the limit switch. And the reason for that is that um, I was following, I was using Tom's 3D printed parts uh, where the limit switches are concerned. And I guess I should have checked. I thought I'd ordered the same limit switches as um, he did. However, I am failing to see at the moment how these <laughs> are going to fit. So I'm going to have a closer look at that tomorrow. I don't think these are the same um, micro switches on these little PCBs. Um, and there's just no way that that's going to fit as it stands. But apart from that, um, yeah, that's the Y-axis done. Now, about 95% of this is exactly according to the Prusa manual online. Fairly straightforward, but two things. Because everything's held together by nuts <laughs> and a threaded rod, the whole thing can twist around and you've got to get things lined up. Now the way that, that Prusa suggests that you get the distance between this side and this side is by using the Z-axis frame, which is probably great if you've got the original one, which is a nice laser cut, 6mm thick bit of aluminium 
I'm sure that the slots in there for these two uh, threaded parts, well that and that, are probably exactly 10 mil and exactly the right distance wide. One cut out of wood, uh, well I can guarantee you that they are not exactly um, 10 mil and yeah, I wouldn't rely on them. So I didn't really do it that way, I did it slightly differently and what I did is basically I put the bed frame on and put the bearings on the frame much earlier than they suggest so that I could put that onto the um, smooth rods put them in place and then basically very carefully line everything up so yeah just put the ends balance the actual smooth rods on move the ends around until they perfectly perfectly lined up and then drop them in and now that sounds easy but every time you know as is always the case when you've got this kind of double nut scenario every time that you uh, tighten one up a little bit it all kind of moves about a bit and uh, yeah so it's a sort of going over and over and over again tightening and loosening yeah you can get it all to line up um, so the other bit and I did the kind of the same thing really with the the uh, the width of it so um, you know I basically just put the smooth rods in pushed these 3d printed corner parts up until the smooth rods were in there and then tighten down the nuts again it's tight loose tight loose because you know you don't want it too tight um, yeah and it tends to go too tight um, so what else was a little bit weird one thing that I have done which uh, made life a lot more complicated was because I didn't really want just um, you know all of that threaded bar showing I mean in the Prusa original stuff it's plated or I don't know what it is it's plated black um, which is looks a lot better um, when, obviously when you get threaded rod uh, it isn't it's kind of shiny silver zinc plated stuff and I didn't really want that I just think it looks a little bit well homemade <laughs> it just looks a bit homemade which it is but I don't know so what I've done is um, I've got some heat shrink and uh, I've put heat shrink over all of the threaded um, bars all the threaded rod on here which um, is actually causes quite a lot of extra hassle because obviously you need to leave gaps in the right places um, so basically I had to put it more or less all together to know where for example this was going to go so I could cut these the right length the same with uh, all those bits down there and then it gets a bit nadry around this motor support thing here but I think um, it will end up with it looking a lot nicer um, I haven't actually shrunk the heat shrink yet because well yeah I'll do that at the end when I'm sure none of these uh, nuts need adjusting but it all seems to be pretty good strangely they don't suggest using any nut lock which personally I would have done except I couldn't find any <laughs> I'm sure I had some but I didn't have any I think the majority of this would be okay because it's sort of biting into the um, ABS but certain things for example like the little grub screws that hold the uh, drive gear on the stepper motor yeah I can almost guarantee they're going to come loose this particular stepper motor has no flats on it it's a completely round shaft so there's no sort of flat area for the grub screw to bite down on um, so I will probably get some um, nut lock from somewhere and uh, yeah put some nut lock on there I had to cut down the basically it calls for 12 mil um, M3 bolts to hold this bottom this on here goes through here comes out the top because you can't really have to have a minimal amount um, poking out of the nuts on the top um, in Tom's list and in my list uh, because it's based on Tom's list I had 10 mil and the next size up was 20 mil and uh, the 10 mil is too short and obviously I had to cut down some 20 mil so you know, when you finally do this up it's um, yeah they're not poking through the nuts 
one of the differences between Tom's plans and the original Prusa is that they would just no use normal washers here. These are uh, penny washers, as I call them, or repair washers, or fender washers, I think Tom calls them. It's basically a bigger, larger diameter. Um, and that's because it's going into a piece of wood and you want a little bit better grip. So those are slightly bigger washers. To get it all square, um, I've got a large piece of kitchen laminate, which is very thick and uh, should be very flat. Whereas this surface is not flat. So I basically put it onto there and, you know, you just sort of tap each corner, twist it around until it's perfectly flat. And then I did the nuts up a little bit more, but you could still twist that because it's only, you know, it's not locked in. So I don't really know what stops that twisting over time. I guess you just need to be careful with it. Literally, apart from the, the micro switch, the limit switch, um, there were slightly bigger washers and uh, my heat shrink tubing. This is uh, exactly what is in the Prusa manual um, and kind of what Tom does in his video building the Y axis. It's all exactly the same stuff. So it uh, seems pretty good, I think. Uh, oh, kind of bleh, seems all right. So uh, the next stage is to get on with the. X-axis, I believe. And uh, yeah, we'll do that next.